All right, here we are. It's Clark Lorton with the Larcher and Lorton Sports Show. Al's on the line with us right now. Hey, Al. Hey, what's up, Clark? There he is. Uh, Al's calling in remote. But right now, uh, who we have on the line from the uh, Rockford ISOX, the director of communications out there, Mike Peck. Mike, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on the show here. Oh, it's great having you on this show. Thank you. You know, I think the question everybody's really been wanting to know and, and the thing that people are just clamming to get answered, what is an ISOG? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been asked that a few times over the years. Uh, you know what? Uh, we, the team, uh, it, it originated back in 1999 and uh, leading up to the inaugural season, the, the newspaper here, the Rockford uh, Register Star, held a name the team contest and uh, a young lady from, from Belvedere, Illinois, uh, submitted the name Ice Hogs, and uh, there were, boy, and I think they pulled about six finalists for the for the name, and uh, the, the Oaks, uh, the Rhinos, there was a couple other names that uh, were thrown out there that were finalists, and uh, the, the residents in Rockford voted, and, and Ice Hogs is the name that uh, was voted as the uh, the name for, for the professional hockey team here, and <laughs> it, it's a bit quirky, but I tell you what, uh, it's, it's unique, nobody else uh, had it before we did, and uh, it's kind of cool, you know, not to, to not not to knock other teams, but it's not Hawks or Wolves or Cardinals or anything yeah. like that. You yeah. know, this unique name, and you know what uh, we like it. I know sometimes uh, people look in and say Ice Hogs, but uh, it, it, we got a cool logo, and uh, you know what, uh, it's it's unique. Yeah. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong. I actually like it too. So but yeah, I I, oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I like it a lot as well. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, actually, you weren't originally. It wasn't an AHL team. Is that correct? No, nope, that that is correct. Uh, the Ice Hawks started out uh, in 1999 in the United Hockey League, uh-huh. uh, and we played in the United Hockey League until uh, after the 2006-07 season. And then uh, Chicago, the the Blackhawks actually approached the city of Rockford about relocating their uh, their American Hockey League affiliate, which was in Norfolk, Virginia at the time, uh-huh. and uh, they just wanted it closer to Chicago. So, well, yeah, I think that. No, I think that that works out really well. Uh, yep, you know, it's, it's worked out great. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we're we're an hour and a half from the United Center uh-huh. with moderate traffic, and uh, you know, it's worked out well with guys getting the opportunity to kind of go back and forth between Rockford and Chicago, and it's kind of the way that the uh, the National Hockey League is starting to go with their affiliations. A lot of teams are getting closer to their parent club, so it's worked out great, I mean, and it's been a lot of fun to see you know all these prospects come through Rockford uh-huh. and, and go to Chicago and make some happen with the parent club there. Yeah. Oh, Mike, that's great. Uh, before I want, I want to talk about some guys that you think might be coming up to join the Blackhawks in the playoffs. But uh, before that, I wanted to talk about how you guys are sitting out there. It's uh, things are hot out there, huh? They're heating up. Yeah, they really are. You know, it's uh, the the playoff push is always fun. Of course, we'd prefer to be in the postseason, but uh, right. You know, we're uh, we're we're sitting right on the fringe right now. And um, as of Tuesday night, uh, Milwaukee beat the Chicago Wolves. Yep. So uh, we're tied with the Milwaukee Admirals heading into the weekend, the final weekend of the regular season, for the eighth and final playoff spot. But the big issue that the Ice Hogs have right now is uh, we only have two games left on the regular slate, and Milwaukee and Chicago both have three. Oh. But one of the saving graces is they play again on Saturday. So basically the Ice Hogs need to take care of business down in Texas. Uh, we're in San Antonio Friday in Austin on, uh, on Saturday night. And if the Ice Hogs win – and get a little bit of help, uh, the Hogs should have the eighth seed heading into the Calder Cup playoffs. So that's kind of the, the, the playoff picture. It's a bit murky, but uh, you yeah. know what? The, the Ice Hogs have been playing some great hockey here, and uh, it really would be a shame if the team doesn't get in um, just because uh, the depth that's on this team right now and the way the team's been playing since uh-huh. basically Super Bowl Sunday. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it would be very disappointing if this team – doesn't get in the playoffs because I'm pretty sure the team could do some damage if they get in the postseason here. Yeah. You, you feeling pretty good about that Friday night game against uh, San Antonio? Well, yeah. You know, San Antonio has been struggling, but you can't always look at the records this time of year uh-huh. because a lot of teams in the American Hockey League get uh, get a lot of guys, you know, from the junior ranks from college when, they're, when their college seasons are over and college careers are over. So they get a lot of these, you know, higher draft picks, and it's always hard to gauge – um, you know, teams and looking at San Antonio, we only play them four times a year, but uh, in X Factor and Hockey, and you guys know this is goaltending, and they have a goalie by the name of Dove Grumet Morris, and uh, he's a guy that can uh, can steal some games, so that could be the X Factor in the contest. So there's there's no guarantees. Uh, we, we've learned that this year plenty of times, including last Wednesday in Peoria, 
And, uh, you know, ironically, uh, not really ironically, but uh, kind of coincidentally, a game that could keep the ice out of the postseason as uh, the team was shut out last week, 3 nothing or 4 nothing down in Peoria. So, you know, yeah, looking at Friday, though, that's, that's the focus of the hockey club. And if they, if they play like they've been playing here for the most part of the last uh, month and a half, two months, I, I, I think they can get the win on Friday in San Antonio. Again, folks, it's the Larcher and Lawrence and Sports Show you're listening to right now on the line with us. It's Mike Peck, Director of Communications with the Rockford Ice Hawks. Also, the, uh, the play-by-play announcer. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a, yeah that, is, that is correct. And, you know, and, it's the, uh, the sexy part of the job. You know, the, yeah. the one that I, everyone always wants to talk about. You know, no one wants to talk you about the, I, You know the, what the I want to talk about. In the, in the office, right? You know what I wanted to talk about there. Uh, what, you, what's you, that? You, the Ice Hawks have gone a little viral. Uh, and uh, you, yourself <laughs> as well, Mike. I believe on a... On a uh, on a video that I've seen with about sixty thousand views, one of the top things says Mike Peck is awesome. <laughs> Mike Peck rules. Well, you're probably talking. You're probably talking about the pink in the rink. Uh, I guess misunderstanding that we had back in January. The, 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 I, uh, I, I'm guessing that's where you're going. The misunderstanding with uh, with Grand Rapids. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. Uh, what, we've what had a were your thoughts? This year hearing, go, oh, quote I'm unquote sorry. viral, and that was that was one of them. And you know, you don't see the bench clearing brawls very very often in hockey anymore, at least at this level or the next level. And uh, we've actually seen two bench clearing brawls, one bench brawl, and one uh, incident where we had two other guys come off the bench, all in, in, in the span of a year. Wow. Um, so it's been a little wild here since April first of last year, yeah. and uh, that one on. Uh, there's one with Milwaukee. It, Mil- it, it made its way around the ranks a little bit. Yeah, was there one with Milwaukee? How do you how do you how do you feel about the fighting? Like, uh, you think you it's know, part of the game, or you? You know, I, I do think that fighting is a part of the game. Let's put it this way: if they ever got rid of fighting, I, I don't think it would ruin the game. But I do kind of like the aspect of of having the the policemen out there, guys, just you know, being you know, I guess kept in check for for their actions on the ice. But you know, look at every other sport. It, there, there isn't that, I guess, facet in, in, in any other sport. And, you know, football's a high right. speed, you know, high contact sport. And for the most part, you know, there's not any fighting in, in football. You know, and uh, so I, I do like it because it's it's been part of the game forever. But at the same time, you know, sometimes it gets out of hand. And you know, you look at uh, the bench brawl that happened in baseball uh, a couple weeks back there in, mm-hmm. uh, in in San Diego and. You know, bottom line is something like that gets a lot of attention. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the reason hockey has it for the attention, but for whatever reason, people like it, you know. And uh, Again, I'm not saying that for better or for worse, that's why it's in the sport, it should be kept in the sport. But, uh, you know, you, you talk about that bench brawl against Grand Rapids that the Ice Hogs had back in January, and um, that was probably the most talked about, you know, facet of the Ice Hogs here this uh-huh. season so far. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I don't know how many hits. I haven't looked at the YouTube video, but it was up to like 600,000 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, there's quite a few different uh, versions of uh, it out there. It's great. Uh, yeah, I, I noticed a couple of those. Uh, I really do enjoy what you have going out, out there. I uh, also wanted to talk real quick about a couple of the guys that uh, that are up with the club now, like this uh, Brandon Sad. Mm-hmm. He, he was with you yeah, guys Brand- earlier this season, yeah? Yeah, he was. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, it's uh, it, it's always hard to, to to gauge guys and try to predict what they're going to do in the NHL. Brandon Saad, when he was in Rockford, was extremely, extremely inconsistent. And uh, he started the year injured. Um, he battled through it. And then really when he kind of got his uh, legs under him, you could see the potential of Brandon Saad. And then we hit about December, and he was a roller coaster up until the time of his recall. Matter of fact, uh, the last time he was on the ice for the Ice Hogs, he scored a, a game-winning goal in overtime in a very unique three-on-three situation because there were two penalties up on the board. Mm-hmm. And he looked like a man amongst boys out there, and he hasn't cooled off since. And it, it helps that he's playing with you know two all-stars up in Chicago for sure. But at the same time, I mean, he's got a ton of potential, and you know, you got to be that good to, to play with a Jonathan Case up there, or a Marion Hosa, or, or a Patrick Kane. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's it's great to see him succeed up there, and um, you know, but watching him here in Rockford this year, you know, he was pretty inconsistent, but he's really found his game up in in NHL. Oh, that's great. You know, I we we have quite a few fans that are out in the Rockford area, as you might have. Heard, uh, I went to uh, Hiawatha High School where I was a uh, member of the basketball team. Well, really, I had the best view of the games. I was right there next to the coach. It was great. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I, I did that for I did that for a year or two in high school as well. <laughs> you know, front row for for a lot of games. Hey, best seat in the house. It was free to get to the games. You know, it worked out real well for me. <laughs> but uh, who do you yeah, see you com- everything? Yeah, who do you see uh, 
coming up to help the Hawks in the playoffs? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen. Uh, uh-huh. The thing with Chicago that, that I've noticed they've done this year, there haven't been a lot of recalls from Rockford when they probably could have recalled someone up from here. And, and right now, mm-hmm. they, I don't think they want to disrupt anything that's going on in that lineup. You know, not that, uh, you know, calling up a Jeremy Morin or a Ben Smith or a Brandon Peary or a Jimmy Hayes would, would hurt them. Uh, but right now, I think things are pretty steady. And it all kind of depends on what happens here with Rockford. Um, if this team makes the playoffs here in Rockford, uh, guys, you know, won't be called up until the season's over here or until there's a need in Chicago. But with that being said, um, you know, they always call up usually around eight to ten guys. They call them black aces, and uh, they go up there and kind of serve as quote unquote the the, the practice squad, and they're kind of sitting there on reserve in case uh, they run into an injury problem up there, or I guess a suspension problem, which doesn't really happen too much in the NHL in the postseason. So, uh, but you know, guys, uh, I guess the, the four guys I just mentioned. Um, you know, Jeremy, starting with Jeremy Moore, and I mean, he's been unbelievable here for the Ice Hogs in the second half of the season. Uh, Jimmy Hayes has been up this year already. Actually, Moore and Hayes have both been up. Hayes was up for, I think, seven or eight games earlier. So both those two guys are guys that could step in. And a guy that's been battling some injury, but that, it, that's been really good for Rockford, has been Ben Smith. And, uh, you know, he scored a couple of big goals for him in the playoffs a couple of years ago, including a game yeah. winner uh, against Vancouver. So he's a guy that, that's been there before and is, uh, has a little bit of a proven track record. And Brandon Peary, I, I guess, is the other guy. He's uh, tied for the league leading points, and he has 14 points over the last two weeks in the American Hockey League. So offense and depth at forward is not a problem for the Chicago Blackhawks right now. All right. Hey, Mike, uh, again, I really appreciate it. Uh, last question here. How's the office hockey game? How's your office hockey game? <laughs> Well, it's not existing. It's been banned, unfortunately, uh, from oh. from the Rockford Ice Dogs office. But uh, <laughs> things must know, have gotten pretty some, wild there. We've had some good battles. We've had some good battles of office hockey here at the uh, uh, with the Ice Dogs. So we, you know, I, I guess quote unquote the way that we uh, we pass some time with those long summer uh, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep keep fighting <laughs> on the ice, not in the office. I guess. Yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's that's good words to live by, right there. How much is that a uh, bobblehead of yours going for on the uh, you, on eBay these days? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't know, but uh, you know, one of my friends uh, said they saw one at at, at the Goodwill uh, not too long ago. So I don't know if that, it's a sign that you've made it or that your <laughs> your career's on the decline. So well, I I, I'm going to go with somewhere. I'm going to go with the first part of that for you. <laughs> hey, thanks again for yeah. being on the show. I know Al is over there on the phone, Al. Did you have any last thing yeah. for him? Um, no, I, I just want to wish you guys good luck in the playoffs because I think you're going to make it. And uh, thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us. Yeah, anytime, anytime, guys. I appreciate it as well, and hopefully we can get to the postseason. All right, that sounds great. Take care, Mike. You too. Thanks, guys. Mike Peck with the Rockford Ice Hogs.